Welcome back guys, this is Thomas and I just wanted to do a quick review. I wasn't really planning on doing this. I'm trying to work on some diorama projects, but I got this guy in the mail and I was pretty excited about it. So I just wanted to hop on real quick and get this one out there. So I know that this is everyone's favorite Superman and just kidding. I know most people hate this uh, design, but I, I'm not so sure about that because it sold out on the McFarlane site. It sold out on... Target. I think it's available for pre-order on GameStop, but for a lot of people I'm seeing that said they hated this part of Superman's past, um, the figure sold out pretty fast. So I guess I'll ask this question. Did it sell out because it really is secretly everyone's favorite? Did people just want the Plastic Man build a figure? Or are just people McFarlane completionists and really just want to complete the line? So. I don't know, I think there is a secret love for this figure. I have some very specific reasons why I love this figure, so I'll kind of go over those. But this was the first Superman action figure that I've ever purchased. I never owned one, I never had one as a kid. Maybe that's why he was never really one of my favorite characters. I had a lot of Batman, but absolutely no Superman figures. I was gifted my first Superman figure by a good friend that I've met through the toy community, Teal Mike. He gave me this because we were having a discussion of how I never owned a Superman figure. So he did gift me with this NECA Toon Superman. So pretty cool. He lives on one of my displays. But yeah, I just never really got into the character. I did get more into Superman when the WB show came out. However, when that hour came out where it was either an episode of Batman or Superman, if it was an episode of Superman... I may or may not watch it. If it was the Batman episode, I always watched it. But I was a little more selective with my fandom for Superman. But why do I like this particular Superman design so much? There's a few reasons. One, I was probably in about fourth or fifth grade at the time this came out. And I just remember going through one of those pamphlets of scholastic books. I think the teacher used to hand them out. You could take that pamphlet back home and then your parents could or could not buy you some of the books that were on that pamphlet but I remember that there was a picture of this Superman on there and I thought wow a new Superman and at the time I probably thought you can get rich off comics and I said I have to find that comic book this seems like a big deal they're changing the look of Superman so I actually did keep an eye out for it I didn't really have internet back then or you know there wasn't YouTube where you can like look up when things are getting released and I just remember going and having my dad drive me to comic book stores. And it was kind of intimidating because everyone kind of seemed like comic book guy from The Simpsons. But I remember going in and asking for it. And they didn't have it. But I did go into one comic book shop and they pulled something else out that had a, this Superman on the cover. And it was Wizard Magazine. And I think that really kickstarted not just my love for this design, but really opened up my world to all different kind of comics and different customization of toys and different storylines and artwork so you know i do credit the creation of this character with me getting more into comics because it helped me discover wizard which in turn made me fall in love with other characters so definitely holds a special place in my heart and i actually did pick up the first issue of the comic so I mean I've kept this in pretty good shape all these years so pretty neat to still have that but pretty exciting it's May 97 so that's when this came out so definitely excited to get him we're gonna get him out of the box check him out all right looking at this figure it's pretty much what we come to expect with McFarlane I only have about 20 McFarlane figures because I'm really selective with this line but does have some pretty good articulation can get a little further than a wide pose now one thing I kind of like but at the same time dislike about McFarlane figures are these shoulder discs if you get a McFarlane build a figure then these kind of come loose so I don't know if you can pop these arms out but if you did those would fall out so they're loose in there but it does give you some pretty nice range of motion with the arms so in a way I do like it because it allows you to do that Articulation on the head is fine. He can look up pretty much as far as I'd want him to, especially in some kind of flying pose. Bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, hinge and rocker at the wrist, double knees, hinge at the ankle, ankle rocker, and then you do get this toe articulation with most standard McFarland figures. 
He can split pretty far, even with the diaper. That's about as far as he's going to be able to get his leg up. And I will say he does have very limited articulation at the waist. There is a rocker there, but you're not going to really get him into any crunch poses. And he also does have a cut at the abs, but you can't get him bent forward or back. So this is pretty tight here. So pretty much he's going to always be in that kind of upright position. Not too many crunched over poses. And, you know, just looking at the source material, I think they nailed it. There's definitely some things I probably would have liked a little different, but I think overall he looks pretty good. Uh, one of the things I would have liked different is to have more of that broader chest, that kind of V shape there, because he's kind of narrow here. But I think depending on what photos you're looking at, he might look a little different. But so something that's kind of weird. I don't know what reuse this is from, but he does have some sculpt onto his wrist. So that's definitely not part of the design. So I'm not sure what figure that comes with. We know McFarland's proportions are typically not always spot on. I'll reference my Robin figure that's way too tall, but I still enjoy him. I still like him and I'm still going to enjoy this figure. But overall aesthetics, I think he looks pretty great. I mean, the lightning bolts going down his arms and legs match the artwork. So that's great there. Um, I do think that they could have probably added some embellishments as far as accessories, but we'll go over those in a second. But pretty much the only thing that I really think is the biggest issue is just that kind of random sculpt. So I'm sure they have some bare arms that they could have used. I'm not sure why they went with uh, this one that had sculpt on the wrist. So a little bit of a bummer, but you really can't tell unless you're super close. He does come with a few accessories, so figure stand, which we always get with McFarlane. You do get this card, which I never understand why he doesn't match the artwork with the actual figure, but this is the mullet Superman. I almost bought that version of the Superman that came with Crypto, but he was a little too bulky, and I didn't like that he didn't come with any bicep swivel. So I passed on him, but eventually I will need a classic Superman in this scale. But that is the look that I would be looking for, so hopefully we get a different version of him coming soon. Then you do get this torso that goes to Plastic Man, which I will not be building myself, so I'll probably sell this or see if any friends need it. But for now, I don't really think this is something I want to continue. I'm not going to be a completionist on this line, although he is a cool character. And then we do get four different lightning bolt effects. So these are kind of shorter ones. I think they go on his arms or legs. So these look like they have more of a narrow design. So these will probably just slip right onto his wrist there. And I have a few effects pieces that have come with other McFarlane figures. They don't stay too well. I think these are the same ones that came with Impulse. So they're always falling off. But I'm pretty sure if you just get them in a pose that will kind of cater to them having some friction on the limbs, they'll stay on pretty well. Now, one of the things I wish they would have came with, I don't know if it could have been an alternate head or maybe something that could have clipped onto his head, but lightning bolt effects coming out of his eyes. So I think that's kind of my, my one major issue with the figure. So kind of wish we had that. So final thoughts, just getting some representation of this character on the shelf is good enough for me. Although I would have liked to see maybe different set of arms here, more lightning effects. And something else I would have really loved to see was some more hands. So some open flying hands, maybe some wide open hands, some grip hands. I don't know why some characters come with multiple sets of hands and some don't. Like this Riddler figure. I really do love this figure. And he came with at least three or four different sets of hands. So while it's cool to get it with this character, I would have much liked it to get extra hands with kind of a mainline figure. So... Not sure what he's doing with that. I think Robin only came with one set of hands as well. So just one of the gripes I have with McFarlane. Now in terms of where we've seen this figure before in action figure form, one of my favorite lines from back in the day was Total Justice. And I think that morphed into the JSA, Justice Society of America, and the JLA, Justice League of America. Those were some of the best Kenner DC figures I think ever made. So if I had to guess the first figure, it was probably that one. I think if you remember the Warner Brothers store, they used to have dolls and I had a few of them. I had the Green Lantern doll and the Green Arrow doll, but they did make a Superman blue one that I never had. And probably most recently, they did make a DC Classics one. So before that line went down, there was a version of Superman blue. So you were able to get at least some representation of him on the shelf. 
So let me know down in the comments if this was a pass or grab for you. For me, it was an immediate grab just because of what the introduction of this design meant for me. Also tell me down below, do you hate this design? Did you back then but now enjoy it because it's part of the Superman lore? Either way, just glad that we've gotten this version of Superman. And that does it for this one, guys. Just wanted to hop on quick, show this guy off, and talk about some of the history and what it means to me. But until the next episode, guys, we'll catch you next time.